Hey everybody, this is Andrew from TS for Tech. And today I'm gonna to be doing an unboxing and taking a first look at this camera. So this is a high definition security camera with a rechargeable battery from a company called Litmore. That's L-I-T-M-O-R. And they have a website I'll link to in the description as well as they sell a lot of these things on Amazon. So this is their kind of wireless battery cam. So it does not need uh, to be plugged in to a power source. It has rechargeable batteries that you can use. Similar to, I think, like the Blink cameras from uh, Amazon, that kind of vein, right? So they're not constantly recording, 24 hours a day streaming sort of thing, but they're motion activated cameras that can record locally or you can use their app and, and that sort of thing to get at the footage, right? So um, definitely interested in this one. It's 100% wireless, as I said. It's uh, IP66 rated for um, weatherproofing. So rain, shine, all of that, no, no problems. There's 125 degree field of view. It's 1080p uh, video quality. There's 90 lumen spotlights on there. So you, know, you can have some LED lights to kind of add some uh, light. Uh, it has two-way two -way talk. So you can talk through this if you get an alert. Similar to other cameras, have like a conversation with whoever's there if you, if you need to. It has a built-in siren, which is actually kind of interesting as well. You can customize the motion zone and alert zone and all of that. Like I said, it's weatherproof. And they have what they call color night vision. So as opposed to kind of just the, the black and white night vision, they have some mode where you actually get uh, the ability to see kind of like night mode on uh, Google Android devices and things like that. It's kind of built into this camera, so it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, it has a 360 degree mount, so you can kind of mount this anywhere, position it however you want. Works with Alexa and Google Assistant. Uh, box got a little smashed in shipping, but um, so we'll just uh, so we'll take a look at it. So I'm interested in this. I've got quite a few other cameras around my house that I've used in the past. I've done a couple of reviews on the on the channel for wireless IP, Wi-Fi cameras and that sort of thing. I do use Simply Safe. I've got a couple Simply Safe cameras. I have uh, some other Foscam cameras that I use with uh, a Synology uh, disk station to kind of do recording. So I've got quite a few cameras around my yard and my house just to kind of keep track of stuff. So always interested in checking out additional cameras because it's always good to have options and visibility and, and whatnot. So let's take a look what's in the box. And right on the top here, you got the user manual, set up your camera. So we'll have to take a look at that. Read me before use. Uh, it talks about how do you actually uh, set up the mount and how do you mount the camera. Take a look at that. This is just nothing. And this is the camera. It actually looks pretty cool. So what else do we got in here? So we have... Let's get this out of the way. Some accessories. So we have like a 3M sticky thing here. Uh, we'll have to look at how this actually mounts. And you have a USB charger, charging cable. So if you want to charge it, I guess. So that mount, it looks like um, you get screws in a little bag. So you can probably mount this, you know, obviously using screws because there's holes and or maybe just the sticky mount depending on where you're going to place it um, get a couple different options there and then basically this kind of is interesting just pops off so the idea is you know you can you mount this wherever and then you can move the camera point it however you'd like using that mount and then if you need to charge it you can just easily pull it off there's a charge plug here under a cover can get it off maybe yeah it's just stuck in there so you basically can pull that off to charge it there is a screw mount on the bottom as well so if you 
had a different type of mount where it had the threaded little adapter stud. You can then mount it that way. But yeah, so I'm gonna pull this off. So there's the camera lens right there on the top. You can see. And this bottom piece is I'm assuming kind of like the motion detector there. So, so basically, as you can see here, you've got the camera on the top, you've got uh, two LED lights there, you've got a couple other sensors, um, it looks like a probably like a speaker hole or a microphone hole, speaker grill on the bottom, and you can unlock it by twisting, opening it up, and then you've got batteries inside. So these look like pretty beefy batteries. 2600 uh, milliamp hours, 3.7 volts each. I guess you could potentially run this off of like a USB as well because if I'm looking at this, there's a USB connection inside and then this actually is a port cover where you could run the cable in and then plug it in. So I'm assuming you can plug it in if you wanted to plug it in and don't want it to be totally just wireless or you can have a wireless and then you can take this off and plug it in when you need to charge it. I don't know what the battery life is or anything like that. We'd have to kind of test that over time to see how long that lasts. But if I take the batteries out, as you can see here, you can see where your micro SD card goes. And this is kind of like one of those little flip open slots. So we can put a card in and then lock it in. Let me quickly grab a card. I will have to get a bigger memory card. I've only got an eight gig card handy here that I haven't used so it's basically kind of just slide that in there yeah I've never seen actually a card slot like that but basically you, you just push it in and then you slide this up to lock it so you got that in there now and then I will just put the batteries in it's got batteries in put that back on you can see I think you can see there's a red little flashing light there. So I'm just going to see if that will balance and then I'm going to get the app on my phone. So here's the app, Litmore app, kind of a cool little motion background. I'm going to get started. I'm going to put in my information here, entered my two-factor authentication code and now I can sign in. So we'll sign in. Yeah, so basically then it says welcome, and then you're gonna click on what you're gonna add and scan the QR code. What QR code? Next to the battery department. Okay, so I gotta open this guy back up. Basically wants you to scan the QR code. If I can get it to focus. Okay. So I scan the QR code. I'm going to call this just battery cam. So I'm just calling the battery cam. Next, press the reset button, which is the button on the inside here. Hold it for three seconds. Blinking light. Red light is flashing. Now it wants me to set my Wi-Fi password. So apparently that <laughs> sends some information uh, to the the device using uh, sound, which is actually kind of interesting. So no, it says red light is still flashing. I did get this set up with the my Wi-Fi network. Come to find out the problem that I was having uh, early on in the video where it didn't recognize or didn't register the Wi-Fi details was because I had a different, I, didn't, I guess I didn't have the right SD card type in this. So the micro SD card I stuck in there was an eight gigabyte card that might not be up to the standards that they require. I think they, re I'll have to look and see. I think there's a certain class SD card and size that they recommend. After I put something else in there, a Samsung card uh, with uh, like 64 gigs, it, it started to work, right? So it recognized 
uh, the Wi-Fi connected. Now you got this green light that shows that it's connected to Wi-Fi or whatever. So it is set up and it is working. So if I do look in the app, so I can see. So I got the sound. So I can see uh, the live view of the camera because it did sense, sense motion. So uh, you can see yeah, T is for tech. There, so the camera yeah, does detect, detect motion. It gives you an alert and starts to show on, on, on the app. But what I'll do is basically go ahead and set this up a little bit more. Like I said, I'll put it maybe in a location and then I'll basically test it out a little bit more and kind of finish the review on the computer. But basically, as you can see, um, you know, pretty compact device. It's, it's weatherproof. You can see here there's some um, gasket. There's a gasket around here. So when you shut this, then it, it really kind of keeps it watertight. Put this outside, speaker, all of that. So I will do a little bit more testing, get this set up, and I'll continue on the computer with the rest of the review. So I'll see you over there. So I did set this up and I have the app running. So this is the Litmore app on my phone. I named it Camera One, as you could see. So if you take a look at this, we can click this little icon here and go into the settings. So as you can see, uh, you can turn the device on and off via the app. You also have the device name, which you can change. There's some settings around live view and like the battery savings on it. You can turn the light, those LED lights on and off using this. You can set up a schedule of when it would be like sending alerts and monitoring for motion. Um, right now it's set to all the time. Get notifications, basically saying, um, you know, instant push where as soon as it detects motions, it will send you a, um, a push notification or this regular push basically it does a little processing to determine, you know, maybe if it's a false alert and then it will send it to you. So, you know, right now it's just instant push because I was testing it or testing it out. You can share the device. So if someone else has a Litmore account in the app, you can share this camera with them so they can view it as well. There's this Litmore Plus, which is a cloud storage um, that's coming soon, or you can subscribe to their smart alert service, which basically gives you a little bit more AI um, and details around, you know, if is it a person, an animal, vehicle that triggered the alert. So you have to have a subscription for that. I do not have that set up. And then you can do things like set the monitoring area. So if you, uh, you want to monitor a specific area of the frame, and not the whole frame, you can do that. So I already did this monitoring the center of the frame here. As you can see on this preview image, it doesn't really show you what it is, but basically I'm just monitoring this like center little image and not the whole frame. And you'll see in a second why. So you can modify that. Then you can set the motion sensitivity. So low, medium, high. I have it set on medium right now. If this will load. Oh, send failed. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so medium, as you can see. It has a siren built in, and there's a mode where you can turn it on to, like, if someone tries to remove the camera, the siren goes off. You can also turn the siren on uh, manually, or you can have this kind of automatic siren if you have the Litmore Plus subscription with the smart alerts for the siren to go off when it detects a human. So... Um, like I said, I can't really test that piece of it because I don't have the subscription. Then there's a talkback volume. So if you use this as a two-way communication, you can set the volume coming back. Uh, you can change your Wi-Fi network. The signal strength you can read. So this is outside of my port or my deck. So uh, it's a little bit of ways from my router. So you can see, I mean, the signal is okay. Uh, 78%, I guess. This is what I mentioned, the anti-theft alarm. You can turn on and off. You can look at the storage and format that. Uh, you can look at the battery. Um, and the last charge level, I didn't charge this all the way before I started testing, so it's only at 60% right now. And then you can check the firmware version. I've got the latest firmware. And you can uh, synchronize the system time zone, right? So 
a bunch of different settings that you can take a look at here and configure. Now, if I go into the camera itself, you should be able to see here, uh, there's a strawberry uh, on my deck post with some bird poop here. Um, basically, I have the camera set up in order to just see if I can get a bird or something to come, come into frame and see the uh, if the motion triggering occurs. Right, so I just basically set this up and have it sitting out on my deck, and I'm just waiting to see what happens. So I can turn it in, yeah, this wide frame mode, and you can see a little bit better. Um, there's some bugs around there or whatnot, but but this is what the video preview looks like. So we go back to the settings. You can see there's some filters. If there are events, you can see them. Um, you know, right now this is a, it's basically saying the live view will be turned off because it doesn't keep constantly on because of obviously battery savings and whatnot. You can filter the events based on, you know, the date and, and things like that. And then you can also do like recording. So you can start recording uh, manually by just clicking the record button. Um, I don't know why this says download failed, but it will basically save the video to your uh, phone album. You can take a picture, take a screenshot of the image. Uh, you can turn the light on. So this is the actual, those LED lights on there, and it should turn on. I did test this before. Send failed. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It's like it's trying to send it to the camera, and for some reason, network connection isn't allowing it to go through. Not really sure why it keeps doing that. But you can turn the light on, you can turn the siren on. Uh, from from this view, and you can also see a little bit like you know you can mute it if you're listening in live view and you don't want to hear or somebody's you know making a lot of noise, you can mute that. It shows a battery level SD card and thing, and the settings. So I had set this up just to try to catch some birds or some sort of animals or something <laughs> trying to eat the strawberry here. Uh, nothing actually uh, even went to the camera. So uh, this was just a little bit of footage. As you can see, this is what it looks like out of the camera. And it looks pretty decent. A little bit of blurriness on the kind of outer edges, but it's acceptable for a security camera, I think. So long story short, I don't want to drag this on too much longer. Overall, I think this is a pretty decent option uh, if you're looking for kind of this portable battery outdoor indoor camera with, uh, you know, fairly decent application uh, that you can use to to uh, manage it and, and view the recordings and, and, and that sort of thing. Now, the one thing I'm going to have to do is figure out the actual lifetime of the battery when I'm using this because I did notice quite a bit of drain just over the time that I was testing it, but I kept checking it. Uh, I, you know, I was adjusting the sensitivity levels and whatnot and and that picture that you saw a little bit earlier, the trees in the background kept moving in the wind, so it was recording just a bunch of, you know, just kind of useless footage because, you know, it was detecting motion, but there really wasn't any motion. So I tried to t get the bounding box just a little bit tighter around that strawberry in the in the viewfinder, but it still kind of kept uh, recording some kind of false positives, I guess. Now. Again, I mean, I think this is a pretty decent camera quality, all of that, that I, from what I've seen. Uh, a couple things I need to figure out a little bit longer and, you know, in a longer term review is the battery life. Um, just, you know, how often do you have to charge it? If you do decide to kind of set it up with the USB input, then you're going to have to figure out some way to kind of make that back uh, hole a little bit more waterproof because you pull that flap up and you stick the cord through there and it's not sealed. So maybe a little silicone caulk or something like that. If you really want to do that, it might be an option as well. And then you don't have to worry about the battery at all. Now, one thing I don't really like about this is the whole you have to subscribe to get additional feature sort of thing. And that really rubs in the wrong way generally. Uh, with anything, you know, I have an Eero router and they want to sell you a, a monthly subscription to, you know, security services for that. And you have this and that and everybody wants to sell you uh, extra subscriptions, which I get from a business perspective and a business model. 
uh, you know, scenario. But for me, like if I buy a camera, I just want to buy the camera and use it. I don't want to have to keep paying anybody any more money, right? This thing's about 80 bucks. You know, if you, you get a couple of these, you don't want to, I personally don't want to be tied to some sort of monthly service fee to use them for the rest of my life, right? Or <laughs> however long that I use them. So you can get away with it because they don't offer their cloud storage yet. And that might be something you may be interested in. Having it in the cloud, don't have to have the SD card. Well, I mean, I think you would still need the SD card, but I don't think you you know get the footage off of the camera that way. They'll probably have some other better ways to you know share the footage and review the footage and whatnot. But you know they have this AI smart recognition detection engine on there, and you can only use it and use that feature if you pay some fee. And I think it's pretty low fee, but still, it's something that. It was kind of bugs me that, you know, hey, this got this cool feature, you got to pay extra for it. Um, anyway, so so that would be one thing I would just keep in mind, uh, you know, if you were looking at this for that smart AI detection feature that they, they, uh, they, they market, you have to pay extra. And I didn't test it, so... Anyways, so, but all in all, if you're looking for some sort of truly wireless uh, video camera, and you like the style and you just need decent footage uh, you know i think you think you might uh, want to take a look at it all in all you know i had a pretty decent experience with it i've been playing around a little bit more since i recorded that strawberry on my deck still haven't caught any birds i think they might be scared of the uh of the camera or whatever uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely worth a look if you're in the market for this type of thing. So if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post those below. This is Andrew from TS for Tech. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.